What's going on everybody? It's Joan. We're back for another Acceptable Casualties Battle Report. Tonight we got 400 points of battle group. We're going to be doing Spring Awakening. We got the Soviets taking on the Germans. We'll be back a second to go over list and deployment. Alright, so here I have my 400 points of Soviets. They have a battle rating of 29. Uh, pretty much everything in the list is a mix of regular and um, inexperienced. So down here I have my Ford HQ and a uh, Jeep. Next to him, I have the uh, VVS Air Control. Uh, he's also going to be in a Gaz Jeep. For my infantry selections, I have two infantry platoons of inexperienced troops. And then for their support options, there's a Maxim, a 45mm anti tank gun, and a truck, and then an AT rifle team. Uh, over here, I have three of the T 3476s, a platoon of them. Uh, next to them, I have two of the 82mm mortar teams, and then next to them, I have a sniper and a spotter coming in as my recce. Uh, I also have, for fire support for this list, a timed IL-2 airstrike, and then a second uh, priority target uh, artillery bombardment as well. So I come in, I think it's like 398 points and a battle rating of 29. So we'll be back in a second to go over the Germans. So here's Vin's 400 points of Jerry's. They also have a battle rating of a 29 as well. So here's Vin's uh, Ford HQ in a half track. Uh, down here, Vin has his Panzer Grenadiers, right? Yep. Yeah, his Panzer Grenadier platoon. He ended up taking four Fausts, so uh, command team has one, and then one in each of those five-man rifle bases right there. So those are the four Fausts for this team. Uh, like I said, Vin did take a Pack 40 as a support for these guys. Uh, he also has three Stugs coming in on the table, and then he has one uh, mortar in there with a mortar pit. Uh, Vin also has a counter uh, counter artillery. Counter. Yeah, and then uh, what else did you have? You had a timed airstrike as well? Yeah. And a timed airstrike as well. So, yeah, it's Vin roughly 400 points, 29 battle rating. We'll be back in a second to go over the mission and deployment. So we are back for deployment and the mission. We ended up rolling up for a defense line. So Vin's going to be defending the middle of the table. Uh, and I will be coming in from this table edge over here uh, right now. So let's go over kind of the deployment. Uh, for Spring Awakening too, since uh, a lot of us haven't played it, the, we ended up getting low cloud cover for one of the special rules. Vin ended up rolling a six. So we have no planes coming in, no uh, timed airstrikes, nothing. If I had an air observer, uh, I would lose him from the list as well, but I don't. So yeah, so right now, both of our uh, timed airstrikes, they are no longer available and out of the lists. Uh, unfortunately, any uh, air attack tokens, they don't they don't fly as well. Figures, one time I bring an air controller, I, I can't use the planes. <laughs> so there's that, and then there's the, uh, I think Mudbound is the other special rule. So since we're fighting in Hungary, they got the thaw, the winter coming in. So all the, uh, all the terrain in here, uh, there's... Uh, possibility on a battle rating token pull level one you can play it against your opponent there's a chance that you can bog down their vehicles and, and make them immobilized and do some other things with them so those are the two rules that are playing it from the uh, spring awakening book just to kind of keep you guys filled in for uh, the deployment over here ended up getting what is it he had no recce units but he ended up rolling 10 units to come in and yeah. get deployed. So uh, Vin's set up down here. He has a rifle team with a Faust right there. The white, uh, that clear bead means that they are in ambush. They're supported by a Stug right here. Uh, in this building is the one I see. What do you, what do you have in here, Vin? The, so the first in command who's pinned. Okay. That's why it's next to the half track. Right, okay. That's just a symbol for it. Um, I have a, my machine gunner. And then below it, I have the sergeant of the platoon. Okay, all right. So that's what's filled up in this building here, and then there is an objective right there. Uh, back over here in the hay fields, all this is going to count as a five-up save in the hay fields, uh, just as like kind of like soft cover everywhere. Finn has uh, one of those rifle teams with a Faust, uh, MG team, that Pack Forty, another rifle team with a Faust, another MG team in ambush. And then back here, Vin has his mortar in the mortar pit. Uh, there's the second objective, and then there's an objective back here that Vin controls as well, um, next to that little barn area. Vin has reserves coming in. Turn five on a D6, I think is how his work. Uh, and then for my side over here, uh, I was only able to get my one recce unit, which is my sniper on the table, and then three additional units. I don't have uh, all my troops starting to roll in until the top of turn three. So I have the sniper up there in the front of the woods. Down here, I have my mortar teams uh, in here in the woods in this back corner over there, the two 82 millimeters. Then back up here, I have one of my platoon commands coming into mortar spot, 
And then uh, next to them, I have a 45 millimeter anti-tank gun that kind of has just like that lane of open ground there just to maybe pop a stug if it gets a little aggressive. So that's what we're looking at right now for, uh, for the uh, deployment and the mission. Back in a second for Soviets, top of turn one. So we are back for Soviets. Uh, top of turn one for this one I ended up getting nine orders and then uh, well I rolled a nine and then I had my officers which would give me another four uh, which was more than enough than what I needed so to start the term, uh, turn off I ended up using my uh, command team right there to spot for a mortar over here from those 82 that those 282 mortars uh, I ended up rolling my scatter dice and it was four dice I planted it here scattered to right here uh, and then I ended up rolling my um, my actual damage dice. I got like two sixes uh, which were direct hits on these two units and then I had um, another option to pin. So through all of it uh, the rifle team here they lost two guys and then the machine gun team lost another guy and both of those units are actually pinned. Uh, then with my 45 millimeter that I had down in the corner over there I tried to fire two pinning shots down here at Vin Stug and I ended up missing on both of those and that's all I have right now for the top of turn one. Vin also pulled a chit for uh, losing the recce battle. I had a sniper. Vin had nothing. Uh, I don't know what Vin pulled. It was nothing good. Well nothing good for him. Good for me because it looks like it's a number. So uh, we'll be back in a second for bottom of turn one for the Jerry's. We are back for the bottom of turn one for the Germans. Uh, for this turn, Vin ended up having nine orders. Uh, so what he ended up doing here is the Stug, as you can see. Vin wheeled him around from that position, uh, pushed him up over to here. Uh, Vin also tried to place a mortar bombardment here, but failed his comms test. Uh, going down the line, Vin ended up putting another unit in uh, ambush right there, that rifle team. The Pack 40 over here was able to successfully fire down and pin and wound one guy on the 45 millimeter in the corner so that's kind of unfortunate uh, then Vin also pulled a chit uh, and he was able to unpin one unit which is going to be the machine gun team right there the three-man team so that's all that happened here for the bottom of turn one we're back in a second for top of turn two for the Reds So we are back for the top of turn two for the Soviets. I ended up getting, I think, like 11 or 12 orders again this turn, more than I could possibly use. I don't have reserves coming until next turn. Uh, to start this turn off, um, I only had three like really active units here, so I tried to drop another bombardment there. I ended up getting a scatter right behind the uh, mortar pit. Uh, my dice weren't that good. I was only had, I had one pin attempt on the mortar pit right here, but Vin ended up... Um, making his three up save that he needed to make. So he was uh, he was looking in pretty good shape there. Then the sniper that I had down here, uh, since Vin fired the Pack 40, I have a spotter. I was able to, to get within range and take two pot shots at the Pack 40. Uh, I was able to get one hit, but Vin ended up passing the five up save that we have for soft cover for the uh, shrubbery right there. So Vin dodged a bullet on that one pretty well. So this is what we're looking at right now, going to the bottom of turn two. Uh, see what Vin decides to do before the, uh, the red tide starts to roll in. So we'll be back in a flash. So we are back for the bottom of turn two. Vin had, what, six orders this turn? Yeah. Six orders. So first off, Vin took the Stug up here. Uh, he rethought having the Stug out there. He ended up wheeling him backwards uh, with two moves into the woods right here. Uh, then uh, up over here, the Pack 40 fired down at the sniper that was there, and the 45 over in the corner failed to do uh, anything with his two shots. But then the machine gun team next to them uh, was actually able to observe and hit the sniper team that's in the woods right there and did two wounds. I failed two saves with my soft cover so that was the end of that. And then the mortar team, they dropped a bombardment right here that scattered back into this area of the woods here. Uh, Vin had two dice to try to do some damage to these two mortar teams that were in range and he rolled like a two and a three I think. So nothing, uh, yeah he whiffed, nothing <laughs> happened on that. So that's what we're looking at right now at the bottom of turn two. Um, be back in a second. I finally got reserves coming on for the red, so we'll see how that pans out. Be back in the flash. So we are back for top of turn three. That's the only reserves I got in. I got two T-34s on this road over here. Uh, so what ended up happening this turn, um, like I said, I drove up both of these two T-34s. Uh, I failed to um, spot Vin with both of those shots, so uh, nothing happened on that. Uh, then back over here with the mortar, I ended up 
dropping another bombardment right there. Comps test passed. Scatter, I had like that. It's only a 1d6 scatter right to that haystack right there. And on my four dice for my two 82 millimeter mortars, I ended up rolling like a one, two twos, and a three. So nothing at all. Just a biff. So that's all that happened for this turn. Like I said, nothing happening on my end. I really got to make a push. Uh, hopefully next turn. So we'll be back in a second for bottom of three for the Germans. We are back for bottom of turn three for the Jerry's. Things could have went really bad this turn, but they didn't. So Vin ended up getting, what did you get, nine orders? Yeah. Something like that again. So um, for this turn, Vin had his mortar team. They tried to drop a bombardment down here with their spotter. Vin failed the comps test, so that got waved off. Uh, next up, Vin had the pack 40. It was just out of the arc, so it had the spin. Vin came down, tried to fire a shot down here. Uh, did you observe? No. No, you failed to observe the pack 40. The Stug uh, then got their activation. They fired once down here and uh, failed to hit with the AP shell. And then he fired a second shot at this guy right here. Vin ended up getting the hit. He needed a 5 to blow it up and ended up rolling a 4. I ended up uh, passing my morale, so I'm not pinned, and I failed to be on the Call of Duty test. I did roll a 6, so uh, no chance to return fire on that one. And then Vin, I think, put the ambush. Yeah, the ambush there on the machine gun team. So there's three units in ambush. There's a the clear one. The white one is pinned. So uh, that's what we're looking at right now for bottom of turn 3. Hopefully I can get some more troops in here and start really making a push. We'll be back in a second, top of turn 4 for the Reds. We are back for top of turn four. I ended up getting three reserves in on this turn. Uh, and then I had to roll my orders. I think I had like 12 or 13. So uh, I ended up starting off with trying to drop a bombardment in the middle of the field again. I failed my comps test this time, so nothing ended up panning out there. Uh, then rolled up my T-34 command team out of reserve to here. Drove up to that point, and then I tried to machine gun fire down and pin the pack 40, uh, failed to do so. Uh, then walked in my one IC. Uh, first command over there. He's up on top of the hill with the other uh, platoon command as well. Then uh, down here, I brought on another rifle team, ran them up into the uh, to the woods right here. So that's the first infantry uh, squad coming up. Then down here with this T-34, I was able to pin the Stug uh, right there with one shot. Failed to do so with the second one. I ended up getting a direct hit. I tried to shoot the kill both times, but I bounced one shot. Then failed his morale, so they were uh, pinned. Then this guy here, I rolled him up over the fence, uh, and then went in and I fired another shot at the Stug and was actually able to blow him up. I, I had like a roll of a 10, I think I needed an eight. So uh, that was lights out for the Stug right there. Uh, and that's really all that happened here. Hopefully getting these guys in position to really start making a push. Uh, the only thing on the table right now, anti-tank for distance is that pack 40, but gotta keep in mind that every one of those uh, those rifle teams has a Panzer Faust, so things could get a little little crazy right there if I don't play my cards right. So we'll be back in a second for bottom of turn four. Vin doesn't get reserves in for another two turns, I believe. It's turn... It's turn four right now, so it's my next Next turn, turn yeah. yeah. Sorry, we'll be back in a flash with the bottom of turn four for the Jerry's. So we are back for the bottom of turn four for the... Uh, for the Jerry's right here. So on this turn, Vin ended up um, doing a little bit of damage with his mortar. So Vin ended up placing another mortar bombardment down here. It scattered right to the edge of the table. Uh, Vin ended up getting a six. It was able to wipe out to a man one of my mortar teams, my 82 millimeter mortar teams right down there. So the battery is now only down to uh, one, one base now for mortars. Uh, the rest of the time, Vin took that pack 40, tried to fire two shots down here at this tank, but uh, failed to... Uh, Failed to hit on both of those with the AP rounds. And then everybody else kind of just stayed put. Not really happening here. Vin's one rifle team, he did put in ambush back there. But that's it. That's all that's happening right now. So we'll be back in a second for top of turn five for the Reds. So we are back for top of turn five. I ended up getting six, how many was it? six reserves. I think it was six. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I got every, I got a ton of stuff in, uh, so I ended up bringing in a bunch of units of infantry, um, 
and then some command teams on top of that, the Maxim machine gun down here. There's a lot of stuff. I ended up rolling really good for my orders too. I was able to activate everybody on the table. Uh, with the two T-34s that were over here, I drove them up to this position here and then in their turns, I tried to machine gun pin. The Pac-40 failed to do so. Same thing with the T-34 that was over there. I pushed him up, tried to pin the Pac-40, failed to do so. Um, for the mortar bombardment, uh, I ended up passing on that this turn. I, I decided to move everybody up instead. I brought in the command team here and the rifle team from that table edge from reserve. They're starting to push up and they're going to probably try to support these tanks right here. Uh, in the middle here, you see if there's four rifle teams. Uh, there's a command team and there's a Maxim machine gun. So they're all kind of setting up shop right here. Nice juicy target for Vin if you can land a mortar in there. Uh, and I ended up pushing these guys up. I also had my... Uh, my HQ right there, try to drop the second priority uh, artillery bombardment right there, but I ended up uh, failing the roll for that. So I'll try it again next turn and see if we can get this thing to go off. But that's really all that happened here is a lot of positioning, getting ready to make my push next turn. So we'll be back in a second for bottom of turn five. Vindos have D6 reserves coming in. So uh, we'll see how this thing plays out. We are back for bottom of turn five. Pretty good turn for Vin right here. Uh, he ended up getting both of his Stugs on, as you can see there in that uh, flank in that red objective in the back. Uh, Vin then also tried to drop a mortar bombardment right here, failed his comms test, thankfully. Uh, so that didn't go too well. Uh, then Vin, he had one Faust with these guys here. They were positioned behind those rocks, ran up. And blew up the tank. <laughs> no, yeah. Vin failed to hit him on this one. So uh, the Faust just kind of shot over and went into the woods back there. But then the Pac-40 cleaned up. First shot ended up blowing that uh, T-34 um, sky high. That was the end of that. And then Vin uh, kind of just held steady with everybody else that he has over here in ambush. And then he pulled an additional chit to, um, to unpin his remaining unit. So everybody is unpinned. Uh, everybody's active right now for the Germans. So we're going back to the top of turn six. I still got some reserves that can come on. Uh, and then we'll, we're, we're kind of in position to start making our push, so we're going to get closer and closer, so we'll be back in a flash. So we are back for the top of turn six. Uh, blunder on my end cost me a couple guys, but uh, we'll get to that in a second. So I ended up getting my reserves. Uh, I believe it was three extra units, so I brought in a bunch of rifle teams over here uh, to open the turn up. Uh, I did a Ura charge over there with all that infantry. I forgot that I had that uh, that artillery bombardment that I was trying to call in, and uh, I was gonna do it before I uh, made the push. But I wasn't thinking, and I paid for it. Vin opened up all that machine gun ambush fire over there. He pinned every infantry unit here except for the command team, and he did seven casualties as, uh, as well. But they did make it up to the fence line. Uh, then with the rest of the term, I. Ended up passing my uh, four plus second priority artillery. I ended up going for the uh, the big guns on the five plus comms test. I only ended up rolling a four, so I'll get to try again next turn and see how that works out. Hopefully, I can get it to come in sooner rather than later. Um, so that's happening right there with that side of the table. The T thirty four command tried to machine gun pin the Pack forty uh, to no avail on that. The Maxim machine gun did the same thing. Uh, I pushed him up to the edge of the woods right here to shoot through that gap. Failed to uh, pin over there as well. The T-34 over here, I rolled up to the top of the hill. It was enough to get some machine gun fire down onto that base. Uh, there's two wounded there, but Vin ended up passing his pinning check. And then all the infantry that I brought in from reserve, as well as some of the other guys from this platoon, they all pushed up here, getting ready to start doing some Ura charges. Uh, mortars I couldn't activate because I had no officers that were free to do any spotting this turn. At the end of the turn, <coughs> excuse me, at the end of the turn, I ended up pulling a chit. Uh, I rolled a 5 to unpin, so all the units that were pinned by machine gun fire are now active, as well as the 45 millimeter in the back. So we'll be back in a second for the bottom of turn 6 for the Germans. Then got those two Stugs rolling up the back of the table. We'll kind of see how this thing plays out. We are back for bottom of turn six. Uh, Vin had some hot dice. I had some terrible dice, and we'll show you the result in a moment. <laughs> Vin had uh, enough of orders to pretty much activate everybody. Um, he tried to drop another bombardment over here, failed a comms test uh, down there. With the Stugs, one move, two moves up to uh, get to that one. This one pushed up there, tried to pin the T-34 down here with the HE round, but failed to do so. Uh, then back over here, the Pac-40 tried to fire two shots down here and failed to do anything to the T-34. Then Vin's machine gun line that you see right there, 
they opened up on this platoon of uh, infantry right there. Vin had a bunch of kills, and then since my guys are experienced with all my morale tests, I had a bunch of units down to like three guys, two guys, uh, and then I just failed all the uh, all the morale tests, so they all broke. So I had to pull three chits just for that right there. So that was pretty devastating. Kind of stunted this uh, this movement on that flank. So that's what we're looking at for the bottom of turn six. Uh, Vin's got the table locked down pretty well right now. I'm going to need some, some magical stuff to happen next turn to turn us around. So we'll be back in a second for top of turn seven. Yeah. We are back for turn seven and gross. So I got all my, uh, all my reserves on the table. Uh, turn started off okay, but obviously it didn't play out the way that I really wanted to. So, um, we were able to push up our T-34 to this point right here. I fired down at Vin's rifle team over here to start the turn off, killed four guys. Um, Vin, <laughs> Vin had one dude left beyond the call of duty test on his morale, passed it, came over, they had a Faust, shot the Faust, blew up my T-34. So that stunted that attack right there. Uh, with small arms fire from over here, we were able to pin that machine gun team and then we were able to take out the pack um, so those two are done. Like I said, these guys are still active down here. I took a shot with that 45 millimeter in the corner, two HE shots down here, failed to do anything with that. I rolled pretty good my orders too, uh, just to pass that along. Uh, over here with this infantry, we did an Urah charge from there, pushed everybody up to this point here. Um, my anti-tank rifle came out of reserve, so I moved him up to this point over here. Couldn't do anything with mortars uh, at this point, so we're kind of just waiting. I also failed my off-table artillery second priority. Uh, that biffed. Over here with the T-34, uh, they ended up just sitting still. I fired two shots at the Stug over there. I got one hit and then um, I ended up bouncing it. Vin passed his morale, so they're still okay over there. I think I'm only down like a couple shots of AP left with this guy right here. So this is what we're looking at right now, turn seven. I mean, there's a glimmer of hope. It's a little glimmer. If we can get this hill right here, might be able to pull this off in the late turns. But uh, as of right now, uh, it's not looking too hot. So we'll be back in a second for bottom of turn seven for the Jerry's. We are back for bottom of turn seven. Uh, <laughs> things happen, good and bad. Uh, so Vin had eight orders, which was enough to activate most of the guys on the table. Uh, Vin went into hero mode over here with these guys again. We're able to fire down and pin which unit, Vin? Uh, the Maxim. The Maxim machine gun. So they pinned those guys with one shot. I can't believe it. Second attempt. That worked out over there. Then Vin, um, with these machine guns, they were able to pin this unit here and do two casualties. So both of these guys are pinned. Command team is available. Uh, back over here with the two Stugs. Vin had four shots with AP uh, to observe right there because we were on the hill. We're counting this whole hill as uh, obscured if you're on it. Uh, Vin rolled three ones out of the out of the four, <laughs> and then the other shot that he um, shot over ended up just uh, sailing over the top. So the Stugs uh, they failed to do any damage uh, on that T thirty four, and then down here the platoon command, uh, is platoon command and the machine gunner. They're both in ambush. Yep. So platoon command and uh, machine gunner are in ambush, and Vin did pull a shit to unpin this rifle team and the uh, machine gun team over there. So that's what we're looking at right now, going into top of turn eight. Uh, do I like my chances? No, not, <laughs> not particularly, but... You never know. You never know. So we'll be back in a second, top of turn eight for the Reds. <sighs> Oorah, baby. Oorah. I mean, I'm pretty whittled down. So we are back for top of turn eight for this turn. Uh, not a whole lot going down. Uh, so I failed my comms test for the big bombardment that I was going to try to drop down here. Uh, I ended up passing it for the mortar. I had this uh, platoon leader right here. Dropped one down there. I was able to pin Vin's uh, rifle team that's sitting right there. The Ura charge up here to the top of the hill. Vin had three units in ambush. They all opened up. Uh, it took all their fire to take out one rifle team here. I had a Beyond the Call of Duty test mixed in there with those guys. I tried to return pin fire on one of the uh, suppressing fire on one of the units down there, but I. Uh, I had two hits, but Vin ended up passing both of his saves, so they panned out pretty good. Uh, then down here with my T-34, I was able 
to um, observe both of those tanks in separate shooting orders, uh, but I failed to get any hits. So I'm running a little on the low side on ammo with tank number six over here. And then with my 45 back over there, I was able to observe, I was able to get an HE round to hit. I had three dice needing a five up, and I think I rolled like a four, a three, and a one or something like that. So, so the son of a bitch is still sitting there in the middle of the, in the, middle of the table doing his thing. So we'll be back in a second for bottom of turn eight. See how this thing shakes out for the Jerry's. We are back for the bottom of turn eight. Lots of small arms fire and lots of armor missing. So uh, Vince two Stugs, he had seven orders all together. Vince two Stugs, they fired down at the T-34, failed to hit or do any pins. So it's been a lot or of observe. missing. Yeah, or observe. Yeah, it's been, it was a mix of a lot of stuff. <laughs> Uh, then down over here between the house and the rifle team down here, Vin was able to take out this one squad, uh, knock them down to three guys left, but they are still active and in the fight uh, <clears throat> with small arms fire over there. Uh, between the two machine gun teams here, they tried to open up on the command team down there, failed to uh, observe the target and, and do any damage down there. Um, and that's pretty much what ended up happening here. These guys over here are still pinned. I've been opted not to use the mortars. So uh, that's what we're looking at right now, going to the top of turn nine. Like I said, we only play 12, but uh, I don't know. We'll see if it goes that far as far as uh, battle rating goes. We'll be back in a second for top of turn nine, right? Yeah. Top of turn nine. Let's so be back in flash. We are back top of turn nine. Vin's saves ended up saving his bacon on this one pretty well. So uh, for this turn, it was a lot of stay put and shoot. Uh, between small arms fired down here with all these platoons, I was able to take out the rifle team here, able to take out the machine gun team in there, but uh, Vince Ford HQ, they took one casualty, and then Vin made six out of six four-up saves in a row to keep his senior officer on the table. So I was really hoping to get him plucked out, but Vin, Vin killed it on those saves. Uh, back over here. Um, this guy down here took a couple shots of HE rounds from up top. Um, Failed to get anything to go off there. Down here, small arms fire. Uh, I got one hit. Vin ended up making his six-up t-shirt save, so that guy stayed on the table. That squad's down there, last man as well. Uh, then uh, pretty much I moved up the AT rifle to over here, and then um, I failed that artillery uh, call in again. I kept trying to go big. I think I'm going to start paying for it now in the later turns. So that's what we're looking at right now, going to the bottom of the turn, bottom of turn nine, I believe is what it is. Uh, both of us are dinged up pretty good. We'll kind of see how this shakes out back in a flash. We are back for the bottom of turn nine, and they finally broke the back of the Red Army. Uh, so this turn, Vin had some uh, machine gun fire from back there, the uh, platoon command. It was enough to uh, whittle these guys down and kill that rifle team up here, so I had to pull a chip for that. And then uh, with that machine gun team there, Vin was able to take two casualties off this uh, platoon. I mean, that's a squad that was left on the fence right there. So enough to force them to break. Uh, I had one battle rating left at that point. Uh, I ended up pulling the chit worth two. So I broke. That's the end of that. So we'll be back in a second to kind of go over the end of game recap and see where this went horribly wrong. We'll be back in a flash. <laughs> So we are back for the end of game recap. Uh, I guess we'll just go over the Reds' battle plan and then uh, then work into to Vin's defense and what he was thinking. So uh, my original plan setting up, I didn't have a lot of units on the table for the first three turns. So what I wanted to do was try to pepper Vin with mortar fire and sniper fire the best I can to kind of disrupt this middle over here. Uh, I was getting all my comms tests, but me and Vin were just talking about it. Uh, every time that I got the mortar shells to land, I was rolling like ones and twos and threes. I wasn't really getting anybody pinned and not doing anything. So on the back end, I just wasn't doing what I needed to do with those mortars and it let a lot of Vin's units active or, uh, he only had to pull, I think like one shit to really unpin these guys in the heat of the moment. So that, that kind of backfired with that. Uh, but the original battle plan was like I wanted to do, get my, um, troops masked up here and then push up to that fence and then make a push on the objective. And the same thing over here, get um, that other platoon pushed up to this point here and make a push on that hill. These guys did pretty well. They had their tank support um, and it worked out pretty good. They got stuck here, but they were in a good position to lay down some fire and, and do what I wanted them to do. Uh, but over here, 
Uh, I had two big blunders. My first blunder was when I got these guys up here, I pushed them up before I was dropping my artillery bombardments and mortar bombardments to try to pin Vin's units. So when I pushed them up to the fence here, Vin had that opening volley of ambush fire and um, they just pinned everybody and shredded everybody uh, the next turn, which was kind of unfortunate. So I kind of screwed myself on that one. And then with the second uh, target priority, um, you guys didn't see it was off camera, but I got two of the uh, four up rolls right off the bat and I decided to go for whatever the five up comms test, like big daddy guns off table. Uh, I went for those and I rolled, instead of just going for the three up or four up and get some extra pinning attempts, I rolled two fours, so I ended up missing those, but if I wouldn't have gotten as greedy, I probably would have been able to get a little bit better push on this side of the table, but we haven't played in a while, and uh, what's the point of playing Soviets if you're not going to roll out the 152s and, and, yeah. <laughs> and, go, and go big time? So I uh, ended up coming up short on that, and like I said, I, I paid for it right there. But like I said, that was the, the plan for the assault, was to get a, a Soviet Ura charge, across the table here with mortar support and that tank support and then push up the same over here to this hill and then either launch an attack at the house or use this as a fire base for a rifle and machine gun fire to help support the middle. Like I said, this side went pretty good. The middle just absolutely crumbled and I couldn't really do anything. Like I said, Vin had great dice uh, that second half of the game as far as, as, far as a small arms fire go and then uh, just the saves he made in that house over there when he needed it and along that um, that on the hedgerow, but I don't know, Vin, what were you thinking as far as your defense goes and, and how that played out for you? Defense-wise, uh, obviously the main focus, I'm sure everybody noticed, was center, just because it covered. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you had, uh, yeah. yeah. So, you uh, had that whole open ground in the middle is perfect position for it. So my whole thing was just pretty much wait and ambush till you got to the fence line, and then once you did the ura charge, that's when I just kind of, like you said earlier, just opened up and kind of hoped for the best. Like, I was mostly... I called it luck earlier, I think. Well, it was a blunder. You just—it was a blunder you capitalized on. That's—I mean, you know—that's that was that's part of the game, you know. I was—I I was a step ahead of myself, and then yeah. I, I ate what? just a mass amount of small arms it's fire, fire, and I paid for it. Yeah, I paid for it. You capitalized on a mistake, man. I was, yeah, that's that's kudos to you on that. And then uh, secondly, down here, I had that one guy. I had a plan that never actually happened down here. <laughs> oh, with the with the one rifle team there. Yeah, I had the one rifle team here with the tank in front of them, and I was just kind of doing that just to kind of slow you down because I knew the center was gonna get just completely hammered because of all the mortar. Yeah, fire. yeah, that was the plan. Yeah, but you know. So I was work. just kind of hoping to slow you down on this side because I think if it would have gone a little bit longer and these guys could have gone a little bit further up, like you probably. Could have taken that house. I could. I think I would have been able to clear it with small arms fire after another turn or two. Yeah. Just with the amount of, of small arms fire I have up on the hill, I think just um, the volume of dice might have done enough to, to clear it out. But after that happened, I mean, you still had the two Stooks here. All I had left was one AP round <laughs> with that T-34. Oh, yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah, so after that, it literally, I think, would have come down to you or Stugs just being able to sit back and machine gun these guys. I didn't have an answer for them yeah. outside of that 45 that I had in the back corner over there. I had a truck, but I don't think I would have been able to get the truck on the table, get him towed into a position to actually shoot at your Stugs within the 12-round limit. Yeah, you would have taken I, a bunch of fire from... Yeah, you know. it would have been small arms fire trying to get the the gun in the position, and then I might have had, like, one turn of a shot in the dark to maybe do something. And this is uh, my Medal of Honor recipient. This dude right here. I'm going to smash that model. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. But you just ruined everything. Yeah, you know, he was, a, he was a trooper, man. Definitely, like, MVP. He held the line in the middle. That was massive getting that uh, T-34 out of there because that was the same turn that I got that Pac-40 out. Yeah. So, like, if he would have pushed up, I might have been able to really make a, a play on that objective. But, yeah, so that's what we're looking at here. First game of Battle Group back in a while, man. Um, hit, this battle, hit this hard again. Yeah, Spring Awakening, man, it's a fun book. Like I said, if, if you're a German player, there's, like, three really good German lists in there to mix it up. Uh, one really unique one with the Reconnaissance. Uh, and some of the uh, King Tigers. Yeah, I mean, I kind of wish I would have bought my King Tigers. Yeah, you got an option for three <laughs> King Tigers in one of there. So if you're, you know, you're a big cat junkie, there's tons of stuff for you to put together in there. And like I said for the Soviets, it kind of works like the Market Garden book. So you, you need the Fall of the Reich to to roll with the Soviets in there, and they got like some variations. But um, if you're playing uh, the Spring Awakening, just add in the mud thing didn't come up this turn, but the uh, the cloud cover thing. Yeah, that kind of screwed. Yeah. Boned me so bad. Boned you, <laughs> like, yeah. Boned me a little bit too because I was going to use it like dead center. Yeah. Well, for the attacker, I think it, losing a timed airstrike 
is a pretty big deal because oh, yeah, than you're than you're than setting up and you're attacking your defender's positions, so you can kind of gauge really well where you want to hit it and what you want to do with it. So it you know it kind of made a little bit of a difference, um, not too huge. I didn't pull any airplane shit, so it wasn't as devastating as I thought that was going to be. But like I said, there's a bunch of like cool little rules in there, and some of the scenarios in the back of the book look really good too. So I might try to just like uh, crack out one or two of those at random and try to play those through. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the battle report. Um, I think Scott is going to. We're trying to get another one up, uh, U.S. against Germans, late war, uh, within like the next week or two. So that might be up there for you guys to watch as well. So thanks for watching. Like, subscribe if you haven't already. Leave some comments, and we'll catch you guys later.